Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about what's in my gear bag 2021. This is going to be the wedding edition. So I'm only going to show you things that I would bring in my bag to every single wedding that I shoot. Kayla and I are currently doing hybrid as of 2020. So we're shooting video and photo at the exact same time. So that makes my bag a little bit interesting since we have to do video and audio as well. I am using the Nomadic Peter McKinnon camera pack. I've had it for about a year. I love this bag. It's the most durable thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm not gonna open the bag or talk too much about it because I think you guys already know, but if you're interested in the bag, there is a link in the description. We're currently shooting our weddings for 2021 with two EOS R. So I really like the EOS R for wedding hybrid because I can switch from photo to video pretty quickly. And I found a way to map it out so that I can just hit record while I'm in photo mode and all of the video settings that I want are already in there. So it's pretty seamless to go between the two. I don't have to go into menu functions or anything like that. And I'm very excited to add a third body this year to see what's coming out with Canon's new, maybe R line or something like that. I didn't go for the R5 or the R6. I just didn't feel like they were a good fit for me for hybrid wedding video. So cannot wait to see. We also have a third body, but we're going to make another video. So keep a lookout for that. We have bought a third camera that we're gonna do a whole beginner's bag about. So check that out next week. The main lens that I use is the Canon uh, 85 EF 1.8. I absolutely love this lens. It's a portrait monster. Obviously this is a super tight uh, focal length, but I, this is my favorite. It makes my portraits look best, the best work that I have is with this lens so it's a must have in a wedding kit to go with my 85 i have this 10 percent cine bloom filter this is something that i absolutely i just adore the cine bloom it actually never comes off my camera i only took it off so that i could actually uh show you guys in this video so there she is in all her glory i love the cine bloom especially for portraits and wedding work because it just has that creamy look to it that I really like, like you would get out of like a Canon C100, which I've used a lot in the past. I really like that look as opposed to the more mirrorless DSLR look. So again, that lives on my lens. I use that for everything and I would never take it off. Next we have this monstrosity. This is my 70 to 200. I bought this lens pretty much because I knew I needed it for weddings, especially for ceremonies. That's pretty much all I use it for. I will take it out once in a while when I do a portrait shoot, depending what sort of look I'm going for. This is a must have for me in my kit, but I unfortunately don't use it that often otherwise. The last lens that I'm going to talk about today is the 24 to 70. This is actually the older EF version of the lens. and probably will get replaced after 2021, but for now, this is what I'm using. I would really like to get onto like a 35 millimeter prime to replace this and just shoot my weddings with a 35 and an 85. So that's my goal is to really push myself into just using the primes in the coming year. But for now, this is nice and versatile. It gets me pretty much everywhere I need to go from wide into medium shot. And sometimes when you're running gunning, it's a little bit nerve wracking when you don't know exactly what's going to happen and you want to have that kind of range of focal length. Whereas obviously with an 85 and a 35, you're either going to need to step forward or step back or miss the shot. So it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of practice to kind of get into just using primes and trust it. And I think it's a really good practice to do, but for now I'm going to stick with my 24 to 70. One more year. Okay. Now it's time to get into the actual fun stuff here. So I'm using the Peter McKinnon uh, Mist Edition, the second variable ND that Polar Pro put out this past year for this line. Uh, I have the other Peter McKinnon filter. I really don't have a preference, but this is probably the one that I'm going to take out the most in the coming year. I do like the look on this and I didn't get to use it that much. I used his other one the year past and I'd really like to use this one. So that's the one I'm featuring today. These are really great. I have some fairly cheap NDs. I didn't really try anything in the mid range. I kind of just jumped from like junky NDs that I couldn't even use over to Peter McKinnon. So I don't really have anything to compare it to as far as like Tiffin or some of those brands that are sort of 
uh, maybe somewhere in the similar to a little bit lower price range, but I really love this ND. It does the job and it looks beautiful, so I can't complain. So for storage, I'm using SD on the EOS R. I have my trusty little Pelican case here that I just absolutely love. And it holds all of my SD cards nice and tidy in there. Just like everybody else who loves this case. And speaking on storage, one thing that I'm really looking forward to is something like the EOS R that actually has a dual card slot. I opted not to go for the R6 because where most of my work is coming from weddings, it did have the dual slot, but it didn't have a way to switch from photo to video quick enough really at all that was going to work for my workflow. So for the price of that camera to make a switch like that wasn't going to be smart. The R5 would have been a monster for wedding photography, but it's very expensive when I don't need 8K. I'm currently shooting in 1080 for weddings. We're probably going to switch over to 4K this year, but it was just way too much camera and then I would still need two. So, oh, also the R6 doesn't shoot dual video to the card slot, just photo. That's like completely pointless to me. Okay, so an essential piece to my kit in my bag is my hold fast. <laughs> so this is my dual harness. So it holds both of my cameras right to my side. So what's great about that is when I have two cameras on me to have two focal lengths, they're right at my hips where I can pick up and shoot as fast as I want, drop that camera, pick up the next one. It's essential. Otherwise, you have a camera sitting somewhere next to you on the ground or something, or maybe you carry a bag. I can't carry a bag on my back or my hip or anything like that when I'm shooting. It just doesn't work for me. So this is perfect for me. So all you do is you take this little screw that comes with the strap and you put it in here, nice and tight. And the strap goes through here. And this is really, really, high grade metal, it's no joke. Pull on this and then you're in. This can't come out unless you pull on this and it's not easy, it's not gonna snag on something. Like it takes two hands usually for me to be able to pull this and then this just doesn't come up because you're putting pressure on it. So it's not easy and it's not gonna fall off on you. It's really good quality product. Also, it's not really connected to your body, it's just hanging and the weight of the cameras is holding the strap down on you. So I've got this belt anchor. This is a, an extra piece that you can buy. And basically this goes around your belt right here. And then this is the same kind of fixture. It's a little smaller, but it's very strong. And this actually is going to connect to your camera just like the other piece so that it's nice and tight, right? So the camera can really only move about this much when it's attached to your body. So that's nice if you need to travel, you know, like if you need to run, I probably would never run, but if you need to run or walk briskly, or you know you're gonna be on one of your bodies for a little while and you just don't want this one flopping around, floating around, especially if you have a big lens on it. So that works really well just to keep it nice and tight to your body. I actually don't use it as much as you would think, but it's there if you need it. I also usually bring my single. So this slings across one shoulder and you can decide whichever shoulder you want. It's the same exact setup as the other one, except it just has one instead of two. So the reason why I do this is because generally speaking, I'm only shooting with one camera after the ceremony. I'm not usually changing focal lengths that much. And if I am, I'm able to do it in a way that's organized. So I don't really shoot two cameras generally after I'm done the ceremony. So I like to get into this strap so that I don't have an extra camera hanging for no reason. The other thing about these straps that I didn't mention yet is that they do come with a safety feature as well. I've never had this piece fail on me and I highly doubt that it ever would, but it does have this little safety leash which clips on as well. And I do believe that if this failed, I would notice soon enough that I would be able to get the safety off and use and be using this. So I don't like this safety that much because it's plastic. I don't, it's not that I think it won't hold because I'm sure that it would be fine. My problem with it is that it just doesn't look good on this strap because the whole strap is leather. And then you have this, you know, plastic piece and I just don't like it. But the good news is, is that they've started replacing them. I'm not sure 
you'd have to look online but i'm not sure what they've done with any of their money makers which are the two the dual and the single harness that i currently own but i did actually just order a brand new limited edition one that's coming today i'm super excited it looks really really awesome and it actually has a metal safety or or at least it was leather i don't even remember but the leash itself was leather because i really hated how the the kind of nylon looked so enough about that so now let's talk a little bit more about video stuff so obviously we need to do audio so i'm using wireless goes which just snap together because these magnets are ridiculously strong and i'm not even going to attempt to take it off right now these are wireless lavalier microphones that i use to mic up uh, bride and groom bride bride groom groom and um, they do their job i've had them for over a year i've used them at several weddings they're all right i'm definitely getting to the point where i want to start branching out into more options i look at these lavaliers as kind of a backup almost sometimes you don't have a choice and that's what you need but i'm also not using the actual lavalier mic that clips with those because they're supposed to be wireless but in my experience because i did do a wedding with one of those i second shot for somebody who had the clip on one and it works so much better so if you do go for the wireless go system and you're doing something really run and gun and like other people might be moving around with the mic and they don't really understand the mechanics of audio i would recommend rode's little lavalier that actually plugs in and clips onto the lapel so rode came out with this really cool like dual i guess hot cold shoe i can't remember the name it's like sl1 or something i'm not sure it's actually two parts so there is this guy here it's just a piece of metal has two i guess cold shoe you want to call it stick it right in your hot shoe here you tighten it down now i can stick both my receivers on here so i have two people mic'd up i have a bride and groom 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 bride bride mic'd and then the receivers are on here and then this cord splits it right it's so basically i can record with one cord into my mic jack with the two mics going into my one camera which is an absolute game changer because otherwise you have to have another camera rolling and maybe you do but you need to have at least the camera rolling on something constantly and someone's got to be watching that i'm going to be careful here because i'm actually recording into this but i finally got myself a zoom what is it h6 so i got the h6 uh mostly who mostly because i don't i hated the look of, of the new one i don't know i think it's h8 or something i don't need that but also i had experience with this i used this a lot when i was in school so i got this because i actually picked up this microphone here this is just just a zoom microphone it was like 80 dollars. it's working out really well for me so i wanted to get this because recording audio into the eos r has just been it's honestly been a little bit of a nightmare it gets you by for sure but this is just so much better so the great part about having this is that as i start to acquire some more microphones and have a better idea of what i want to do to mic up my entire wedding when we do a full audio setup i have four inputs on this so i should be able to do everything i need with the four inputs and then if i even need more i have my wireless goes that can go onto my camera so i'll have three four five sources of audio minimum if i want to have backup or if i have a bunch of mics they can all go in so that's pretty awesome so I took a little uh, page out of the book by a guy named Eric Floberg that you might know. He's a wedding photographer and videographer in Chicago, and he has a pretty popular YouTube channel. So chances are a lot of you probably know him. This is a JBL clip. It's basically just a wireless speaker, but it's got this hook right here. So I can hook it on to my Hold Fast Money Maker, which is exactly what he does. And the reason for this is because he likes to play music as do I now, for the bride and groom, or groom and groom, bride and bride, when they are doing portraits, because people get so nervous. And especially if you go off with them and you're completely alone, or even an engagement shoot, and you don't really know them that well, it's kind of nerve wracking. I mean, they're already nervous because they just got married or they're about to get married, and now they have this person breathing down their neck with a camera. So I actually think this is a really important tool 
to have in the kit. You can find out what they like, or if you don't have a chance to do that, you can just create a really nice playlist that's gonna set the mood and the tone for the shoot. And it makes a huge difference. Think about how music affects your mood during the day or when you're in the car or, or whatever you're doing. So it's a pretty powerful tool to have in a filmmaking kit. So for camera support, I'm using a tripod, usually only during the ceremony, just to have one of my angles locked off. And I'm using a Manfrotto, I think it's a 290. It's not a video head tripod, but it's pretty much the nicest that I've seen really for uh, before you start to get into the video head, which is another investment that I really need to make this year. But it's getting me by. Like I said, it's good for locked off. I'm not gonna show it to you because it's, it's, you know, my camera's on it. <laughs> also, I'm using this Manfrotto monopod. This does not belong to me, but I actually borrowed this for a job and I don't know how I've been shooting weddings on video without this. Monopod is really essential for that so that you can kind of run and gun, literally run and gun, and then sit down and get your shot and you still have movement, but you're not worried about the sticks because that's, that's no good. And I have my gimbal stabilizer. So this is the Ronin SC. This is the first of the smaller that came out a couple of years ago. I love this gimbal, but uh, I'm, I've already outgrown it. So my biggest issue with this was that I kind of did a lot of homework when I wanted to purchase it to make sure that it was going to hold my EOS R. The EOS R is a little bit big for this gimbal. It's definitely doable. I can put my 40 millimeter lens on here. It's a prime, the Pancake Prime for the EF, for the Canon, but I can't really, I can't really do much else. That camera's really not that small in the mirrorless world. So I want to upgrade to the new, what is it, RS2. I don't want to get the small one. I want the biggest, the greatest in the carbon fiber. Plus they say the carbon fiber is lighter than this. The bigger one is lighter than the small one. I mean, this is not that heavy, but you put a camera on here and you do this for hours. I mean, I've done it. It is really hard and you're in pain. And I mean, I'm not getting any younger, so. I want to do the best I can to make it so I'm not wanting to, uh, I don't know what I'm going with there, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so this is sort of silly, but I think it's something that I will incorporate into the 2021 season. This is the Osmo Mobile 4. This would just be for behind the scenes. So, um, the iPhone 12 will go on here, 12 Pro Max. And this will just be to get footage of me for promotional reasons. It works really, really well. Uh, the stabilization on the iPhone 12 Pro is pretty good, but this makes it so much better. And I always wanna make sure that I have a lot of footage for promotional materials and for ads and things like that. So I think it's an important piece that my second can kind of take some time and um, during the times when I'm shooting solo, you know, if we're doing portraits, I, I generally am the only person shooting. And that would be the time when I would probably make video clips that look pretty badass on this. So it's a little <laughs> silly to mention, but it's important for the business. It looks like that might be it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and kind of see what I'm doing. Keep an eye out because like I said, we're going to actually do a couple more bag videos. We're going to do a day bag video so what i would just take out if i was just going out for the afternoon we're going to do a beginner's bag which is going to be really cool so it's going to be like sort of a minimal setup and maybe we're going to do something in the studio with what i'm using in here or if i was doing a big video shoot what would i take with me thanks for watching guys please subscribe and like the video if you don't mind and come back and see us later thanks very much peace